So under vaulting on desktop PC has already been pretty popular in the last few years because well CPUs are getting hotter and hotter and the newer they get and uh, harder to cool obviously as well. On the laptop side though pretty much nobody is talking about it which I find kind of confusing because on the laptops under vaulting can lead to better performance, low power consumption obviously and also much better battery life. So I'm going to talk about this today. Laptop cooling solutions are pretty anemic as you can see by this example here. Well, although this is kind of a better example because it has two fans, two heat pipes, uh, but it also has to cool a dedicated GPU. So that makes it pretty bad at handling high heat loads or high workloads. And this is why undervolting on laptops such as this one with an Intel chip or this one with an AMD chip makes a lot of sense. And as you can tell on this unit here, um, the cooling solution looks even worse with only one tiny heat pipe and uh, yeah, one fan that's gotta cool this Ryzen CPU. Although I gotta say in this case, it's only a 15 watt CPU, whereas the other one was a 35 watt CPU. This thing still throttles and overheats all the time, no matter what you do. We are going to focus on this one now though, because uh, this is the one I have the most experience with and I can show you some benchmarks where the undervolting actually did increase performance and lower temperatures by quite a bit. But first, undervolting laptops in general is not as easy as you might think, or the BIOS in the laptops is quite restrictive in most cases. So you can't undervolt in the BIOS and you might have to do it within the software. Obviously, there are some exceptions such as gaming laptops with HK skewed CPUs that have overclocking capability in themselves. So they can also undervolt, but those are only in mostly laptops that have decent cooling solutions and that don't really need undervolting anyway. On the AMD side of things, there is also not much support from AMD themselves, because, but there is the Ryzen Master Suite, but you can't really do much on that only with the HX CPUs, but there is also the APU tuning utility and this is where you can undervolt Ryzen mobile chips. On the Intel side, it gets quite a bit more difficult because the XTU software that normally is supposed to be able to undervolt CPUs within Windows is kind of locking down the newer gen CPUs. Uh, so you have to download an older version of XTU so the undervolting works, but it doesn't work on all of the new chips. So you might be out of luck on the 11th, 12th and uh, 13th gen CPUs. Um, in this laptop we are using an older chip which is uh, a 7700HQ that still can be undervolted and I know for a fact that 8th gen also will be able to be undervolted. Starting with the process itself. Obviously if your cooling on your laptop is good you can also raise the power limits within the XTU utility. But the problem is there that obviously when the cooling isn't exceptionally good the CPUs will throttle or might not even increase the performance anyway. So that might not be the best idea. Also when temperatures are high such as in the summer when even inside temperatures reach 30 degrees or more, then that might not be a good idea. So I would suggest using the undervolting feature. Here I would go for the offset voltage and, and then from the zero point, try going down in 0.02 voltage steps. So I would say go down 20 millivolts and then let Cinebench R20 for example run through because that's a relatively high load test and if you have reached the maximum where the laptop crashes such as in my case I have reached 140 millivolts then just step back 20 millivolts and then try to use the laptop normally or try some gaming and if the laptop doesn't crash then then it's probably stable so it's probably as easy as that you could also do that with the igpu 
The iGPU is also possible to undervolt, although it does not consume as much power as the CPU cores, obviously. But on a business or office laptop, it still might be worth undervolting that because it can increase the battery life of the device dramatically. Because when you are watching videos, for example, or whatever else you're doing, most of the things nowadays running in the browser are GPU accelerated. So the GPU is used somewhat for these tasks. So undervolting that might also give you a small percentage of increased battery life. With the undervolting, we have reached in our case about a 10% higher performance, which might not sound like much, but the point is here also that the power consumption itself, so also the heat output is going down, even under full load. And it's going down, especially when the CPU isn't used to its maximum, because when you're watching videos, for example, and the CPU was at 15 watts of load before, and it's now at, for example, 10 watts of load, that's a third that you are saving because the CPU is just running with less power consumption and that obviously leads to a much higher battery life. We have seen improvements of up to one or two hours on laptops with really big batteries, but on small laptops obviously it's a much smaller percentage gain and obviously also depending on what you do with the device. But not only the power consumption, obviously also the temperatures go way down. Before this laptop reached almost 100 degrees and was throttling not only because the power limit was reached, but also because the temperature limit was reached. And that is a point where I am very glad to see the temperatures go down because many laptops are using their CPU to that 100 degree mark and if they go down by 10, 15 degrees, that CPU is much more comfortable working in that temperature range than at 100 degrees and it can improve the lifespan of these components. Obviously, if you have a shared cooling solution such as the one I showed you before, that's obviously also a benefit because a lower CPU temperature uh, transitions into a lower GPU temperature as well. So it might only be three or four degrees, but that's something because new GPUs are also determining their clock speed because of the temperature. So when the temperature is lower, they can clock higher or they won't throttle as much because most of the GPUs in laptops throttle at 80 degrees. And when they are in theory running cooler, they can boost a bit higher, but still reach that 80 degrees, but may reach a higher clock speed doing so. So all in all, it's basically a no loss scenario. Obviously you have to watch out for stability. If you have some stability issues, obviously turn it down somewhat. And also you might not be able to do that on every laptop, I know. And I wished that Intel would, be, would enable that on every laptop as well. I know that this has been disabled for a reason because there was a security issue with undervolting laptops, but maybe that might get fixed with some BIOS update, which I would be very happy about, especially in the hot climate I am right now. Undervolting is quite a lifesaver for me. And when editing videos, I actually gain some performance because of that. I hope you liked this video and uh, tell me about your undervolting experiences with your laptop. I would be interested to see those because yeah, maybe share those and uh, let me know what newer CPUs you were able to undervolt. Um, that is a really interesting part to know what the limit is. I don't have that new of a hardware available to me, so I only can show you the older ones. I'm sorry for that, but I can't really do anything about that right now. But you know, still know how to do it right now. And as always, I wish you a nice day and goodbye.